welcome back. This is uh, the second part of the video. We're going to talk about the theory behind this type of voice so that you understand it better. We're going to talk about it in three aspects. Firstly, we're going to talk about what, is, what does it sound like. And then we're going to talk about what's happening on your vocal cords. And third, we're going to talk about how you do it, the skill part of it. Um, this is the boring part of the video because you know, to explain something is quite difficult, especially something very invisible, very, very intricate, and very counterintuitive too. Why is it counterintuitive? Because there's no nerve endings on vocal cords. That means if you pinch your forearm, you know that your forearm is being pinched. But if you zip your vocal cords, you're not going to know your zip, vocal cords are zipped. So we know how to control vocal cords by feeling the muscles around it. Because the muscles around it, this part, has nerve endings. But vocal cords in themselves don't have nerve, and, nerve endings on them. So this why singing is so difficult and counterintuitive is that you can't feel the vocal cords that actually make sound. You feel the surrounding muscles. But that also means that when you try to learn someone to sing, you always look at their muscle tension. How Do they have tension in the jaw? Do they have tension in the throat? And you try to mimic how they do those voices. Uh, this video is going to be as quick as possible and as slow as necessary. Um, we're going to talk about, first of all, we call this, this is one of the ornamentations, we call this crunchy voice. Crunchy voice because it's, it's, a, it's a noise that made by transmission, car transmissions. That means if you drive a manual car and if you, if you forget to press the clutch, the two metal plate is going to grind because they they, one of them is trying to change the speed, the other remains the same. So usually when you change gear, you press the clutch with an automatic car, it does it by itself. But if it's a manual car, you press the clutch, two plates separate, one change the speed, and then you gradually come together. If you don't press the clutch, it doesn't, uh, uh, take, it doesn't uh, break apart. So you stay together, one change the speed, the other doesn't, then it makes a grinding, crunchy sound. And in, in, uh, in case of cars, transmissions, it actually, it actually harms your transmission. But in terms of singing, we want to make that voice want to make that ornamental voice controlled, which means it doesn't go all over the place, and also it doesn't harm your vocal cords. Um, so that's the name, crunchy voice. So I made this up, nobody called it that way, because really, very few singers use this voice. And those that do, some make this their signature voice, and others make really great songs about it. So there's no name for it, let's just call it crunchy voice. So. I want to talk about three aspects. So first aspect, what does it sound like? And then what's happening on your vocal cords and then how you actually do it. So what does it sound like? Well, for any sound that you sing, there are two aspects. First is the pitch, the melody. And second is the timbre, or sometimes called dynamic, like how much compression people say, or do you use different uh, resonance? So, the timbre and the pitch. Let's make a pitch first. Uh, no, no, it doesn't sound right. It's something like uh, the reason it doesn't sound like uh, is because this note and this note, second and seventh, they're microtones. That are that's interesting. Right? They're microtones. Microtones are the tones that are between two semi steps, which means they're in between. They are not that high, not that low. They're in between. So. The notation is like this. This means slightly flat, that means slightly sharp. As we know, sharp means two, you know, vertical lines, but you know, semi -tone, uh, not semi tone, microtone, it only has one slash. Anyways, second and the seventh are microtone. Sound like. So, what about that sound? That grinding, crunchy sound? That sound, if you listen closely, there are four. One, two, three, four. How did that come to be? First of all, this first note uh, is real voice. And then from here, you start to do, uh, you start to do this breaking apart the voice until in the end, uh, it's also a real voice. What is actually happening? You enter the note, real voice, and then it breaks into falsetto, and then it comes back to real voice. However, as we know, falsetto and real voice don't blend. So what happens is like a car without pressing the clutch and changing gear. First gear, without 
clutch push into neutral, it's gonna the the metal is gonna uh, you know uh, grind. The two metal plates are gonna grind. So you start with like this is the first gear. This is neutral. This is the first gear. And when you get into when you flip into uh, when you flip into falsetto, uh, 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 it's gonna break. Then it sounds like flip. Uh, one, two, three, four. Why does four? The most important is enter and out. Enter falsetto, getting out of falsetto. Every time it changes pitch, it's an opportunity for the breaking sound. Uh, uh, anyway, one, two, three, four, five. Five notes, four intervals, and each interval, break, flip, and on purpose, crunch, crunch voice. So, usually when people say, sing real voice in a falsetto, they take a break. <laughs> they sing together, <laughs> they start to break, and that's on purpose. And then I want to look at how to purposefully, pur purposefully break. There are certain things you can do to make it easier. First of all, when you sing real voice, well, let's look at the airflow. So in the past, we talked about how to sing falsetto. There are a few ways to sing falsetto. One is, well, what is falsetto? Not enough closure, not a full closure, but half closure. Well, think about it. If you blow more air, isn't that going to be, vocal cords are going to be blown open. So one way to sing falsetto, blow more air. Second way to sing falsetto, relax your vocal cords. That way it's easier for you to be blown open. A third way to sing, deliberately try to <laughs> deliberately. <laughs> now, three ways. We talked about airflow. So airflow we can use to our advantage to our advantage. So when you increase airflow, your vocal cords are easy are easier to flip into falsetto. But instead of normal airflow, <laughs> And then add more air. That would be very uncontrollable. Uncontrollable. If the airflow is too high, then the, the sound tends to get out of control. So instead of normal voice, and then increase normal voice, the V shape like this, full closure, and add more air. That would be too much airflow and too high to control. Instead of that, when you sing. <laughs> This note, eh, low airflow. And if you listen to the original singing, that note is short. It's shorter than it's supposed to be. The singer did that shorter than it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be. But the singer did. So he did that because if it's shorter and if it's less airflow, it connects to the later airflow increase this shape somehow like this airflow low and increase here so you do a few things first of all you deliberately flip into falsetto second of all you start with low airflow and it comes to increase airflow to normal instead of normal and high go low to normal it's easier to control and also real voice deliberately falsetto but other than deliberately for falsetto, also from the low airflow to normal airflow increase. And by the end of the day, uh, ends in the normal airflow and real voice. <laughs> Anyways, so, and also, one of the tricks is that Real voice. If you do, if this is too long, your airflow tend to gets too big. So you try to control the airflow to be a small amount on this note. And the, the way that you control this to a small amount of airflow is by seeing this short. And in the original CD, that's how the singer does it. Instead of so this note make it short, make it shorter than it's supposed to be. This way, it's easier to control the airflow to be low, and then increase to normal. So let's recap. 
what's happening here? First of all, there's a melody, but the melody is not a normal melody. It's a microtonal mel melody. This is flat. This is more flat than it's supposed to be. This is more sharp than it's supposed to be. So instead of ah, it's ah. and other than that, there's one break, two, three, four. There are four breaks. Each change of pitch is an opportunity to break. And the most important break is this, from real voice to enter falsetto, and also from falsetto to come back to real voice. And um, this sounds like a flip. It sounds like a continuous, uh, uh, but it's actually one, two, three, four. This, out of falsetto, this end of falsetto, most importantly. And um, how do you do this? First start with the real voice, end with the real voice. But in, in the middle, deliberately do falsetto. In the beginning, start with low airflow and increase airflow to normal and end with normal. So make sure this airflow is low. This is crucial. And how do you make sure this is low? Try to sing this real voice short. So make sure this way is low. So anyways, this is, this is the theory behind this. And this voice is by nature inconsistent. So every time you do, it sounds slightly different. Why? Because this timbre is, is this way is because of the break or the flips. But the break and the flips are unlike uh, real voice or falsetto. Real voice and falsetto are controlled. This is not a controlled. This happened by chance. The flip, the break, the crying sound. Ah, 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 it happened by chance as a result of the flip. But the flip itself cannot be controlled. It is an accident. It's two plates grinded together, crunch by accident. Accidents are really hard to control. So you know if you're seeing this every time you see ah, it's gonna be something different. The best way to understand the different uh, skills and then make sure that somehow have a consistency control.